It's so good to see you. You too. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm Paula Watson from Sweet Issues Art, and I'm doing a small interview. Well, I shouldn't say small, a powerful interview on one of my clients that I call a friend and maybe even a soulmate, <laughs> but definitely a session star as far as I'm concerned. And um, I'm going to let her introduce herself to you guys so that you can kind of see how my sessions and all the wonderful things that I do for classes works. So balls in your court, friend. Hello. Thank you for having me, Hala. My name is Dr. Linda Hurley. I am a lot of things. I'm a mother to three kids. Um, I am an artist, which I didn't used to be able to say. Uh, I am uh, an energy healer. I work with chakras and human energy, and um, I'm generally a creative person. Uh, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> cool. All right. So let's see. Linda's been with me since the beginning, I feel like. Um, all the session stuff started when COVID happened, and we all needed someone to be with, uh, to reach out to, things to find to make us feel better. And I'm just kind of doing this interview to help people who don't really understand how free form art sessions might work. So I'm going to ask Linda a few questions since she's been with me for a while and we'll see how it goes. And of course, the first thing I have to ask is what sessions or events have you joined with Sweet Issues Art? So I have taken your adult classes, the Creative Spark classes. Um, my kids are signed up uh, to do your junior, your Creative Spark junior classes. So even though those classes aren't for me, I'm here, you know, helping them, getting them stuff. Um, so I get to sort of observe those classes. Uh, I've taken several workshops from you, including a wand making workshop and a clay making workshop where I made this guy and doll making workshops. Um, I think it's those three workshops. Yeah. Um, I've also done a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think so. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's like, that's like pretty much everything from the menu. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> a little bit um, of that. Yeah. <laughs> I started taking classes with you because we have a mutual friend and she would post um, things online. Like she would post these drawings that she did. And I was like, what? Like, that's so cool. Okay. I want to take art classes so I looked <laughs> I looked you up and I and I started coming um to your classes and I was really blown away by the way the whole process works that's cool I'm really excited to figure out how you would describe which one is the one that you that's like your go-to what, what do you mean? Like which class? Yeah, like what one was the one that was like, that called to you the most out of all the ones that you've done? I don't know. That's a fine answer. <laughs> and uh, that's yeah. part of like the free form stuff too, is that we learn that we don't always have to have an answer. <laughs> Well, the thing about going to your classes is that it almost doesn't matter. <laughs> it almost doesn't matter if it's if it's like a, a creative spark class or if it's a workshop, um, just being around you and like interacting with you during a creative process uh, is always the same result, right? It's always like this magical, beautiful okay. experience that um, it's not like you don't get that if you only do one thing. Um, so I feel like working with you is very much like hanging out with a friend. And I, and yes, we, you mentioned that we were friends and, and we are friends, but um, aside from, you know, us like personally connecting, your style is very friendly. It's very relaxed. It's very like I'm sitting on the couch with a friend and we just happen to be looking at this thing and you, ha you see it, um, like you see the artwork you see the potential for the artwork and you see sort of like where it wants to go. Whereas I'm stuck with my art saying, oh, this isn't good enough. Oh, this isn't right. I don't really like the way it's coming together. Um, this must not be for me. Uh, I must just not be good at it. Um, you know, I, I have, I, people have told me for certainly most of my adult life, but also part, you know, in, in my high school years, people would say like, oh, that's amazing. Look at what you made. You should sell that. You should sell that. Like people have been telling you this all the time. 
And if I had a dime for every time somebody told me that I should sell stuff, I might have more money than what I've made from actually trying to sell my own artwork. <laughs> so um, I really get stuck in my head and, and have gotten stuck in my head because for me, um, I grew up a lot of time spent in Mexico Mm -hmm. And a lot of time spent here in like rural, very small town, Mexico, where, you know, your embroidery skills or your art skill, like they're not art skills, right? The, all, all the little girls, we all get taught how to embroider because we need to do it to fill our house with the things that we need, like the cloth napkins and the tea towels and the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And like the bed, the bedspread and the, like all these things are all things that we're supposed to make. And so how well you do these things like is a measure of how ladylike you are and how like worthy of a, you know, like there's all this identity mixed in with art and what, what, what I perceive to be art, right? What in, what today I look back on and reflect on is art. Um, and it's also like, I was never as good at it as my cousins like I was never as good at it as people who are you know always in this other mentality like I would come back to the states and I wouldn't touch any of that stuff during the school year whereas for them it's part of their curriculum and you know it's part of like what they're learning in school is how to how to do these things and how to do the manual crafts and how to do the knitting and the crocheting whereas for me it was like this fun thing that I did when I was in Mexico with my family and, and you know look at what my aunts are teaching me and look at what my cousins are teaching me um but it was never like oh wow Linda what you're doing is really beautiful and amazing like it was never that. Um, so I, I see myself through that lens. Like I see my own artwork through that lens of like, yeah, it's nice. Like, yes, you did it. You, you are able to do the thing, but you're not like a master at it or you're not like, you know, you're not like worthy of whatever, right? There's a worth issue there. Um, Would you say that there's some trauma that came with that? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, and, it, and you know, it's not just that, like, I always thought that I was, uh, I thought that I was a good draw, like I would draw stuff and I'd be like, oh, this is so good. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be an animator for Disney when I grow up. And like, I, I had my own version of it. And then I would look at my brother, for instance, and he would, he would like draw these gorgeous, amazing artwork and be like, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's not that good. And I'd be like, well, it's so much better than what I did. And if you don't think that what you did was good, then what I did must not, like, it must be even that much worse. Right. Um, so there's a lot of like, there's a lot of identity. There's a lot of self-worth. There's a lot of self-love and just um, a, a, an inability to appreciate the things that you make as its own thing um, and not like as a reflection of who you are and how this is just like a piece of, you Yeah, know. it's really hard to com not compare yourself when you grow up with people who do art around you. Yeah, and I don't know why, <laughs> but Mexico is super creative. Like as a country, just walking around the streets, everything's super colorful. Like everything that's written, you know, on like windows, you know, menus and things are like written on buses. Like everything's crazy calligraphy and like three layers and shading and like everything, everything is like done in a way where it's just, you know, <laughs> I don't know, it's just very artistic. Like art so it's, it's one of those practical essential things that everyone has. And then you're like, but I don't know, do I have that? <laughs> right, right. Um, so, you know, I've, I've often found that uh, people tend to enjoy, people around me enjoy the things that I make and I don't really think they're all that great, but I like to make them and it feels good that I made it myself. So I've always thought of myself as like a maker, like I make stuff, um, you know, but to call myself an artist is like, what? <laughs> There's all this like extra stuff that comes with the word, right? The word is charged with like- It is, it really you know, is. It's, all this it's, other stuff. <laughs> it's a word that has a definition that I think is not necessarily the correct one. Um, and that's where I think the free form comes in <clears throat> is that, we need to be able to understand who we are in our definition of an artist instead of striving for like, if you don't sell stuff, then you're not an artist. It's like, if you're creating work, you're making art. And, and so is there anything that you would say that you notice in the classes that have helped you with any of these things 
Yeah, uh, very much. When um, when I first started going with you, and we'll talk about this a little bit more when we get into my art piece. Um, but when I first started working with you, like I went to the first class and I like my creative floodgates opened up and I never thought that they were closed to begin with. So <laughs> um, <laughs> even though I, I knew that there was a little tension, like I knew I had some tension with the things that I was making. I was knitting a lot at the time. Um, and I had sort of hit a wall with my knitting and I couldn't really move it forward. I couldn't really figure out how to like, how to get comfortable in it again so that it would, so that it would help me. Right. So that I always, um, making stuff is soul soothing. Like it's relaxing. It's a way for me to like take a break and like get back into my body, into my hands, um, and, and let stuff come out. So I wasn't able, like I was having trouble finding that place with my knitting and I took uh, like a session with you and the drawing that I did in that class was literally like horizontal lines. It was, it wasn't even that, that much of a, of a thing, but, um, I had so much to do after that. I had so many ideas and I had so much like create a flow after that. And I was like, whoa, like I can't, I can't see this lady regularly. Like I, it's, it's <laughs> overwhelming. Like just a little bit is enough to like do all this stuff. So I don't, I don't really need to go. But then, you know, as, as time went on and like I started coming more regularly, like it really smoothed out the artistic process, right? So that it's not like this huge drop and then like this way up and like this huge drop. And, you know, now it's like, it's a lot more consistent. And because it's more consistent, I can think about things differently. Like I can start to pull like what I like about this and what I like about that and see how I can put it together. Um, and it's always so encouraging. Like you're always super encouraging, but also insightful. So when when I'm working on something and I sort of feel like, mm, I don't know, you know, and I, and I sort of get in, into this space, which I think is super familiar, right? Like we're not unhappy with it, but it's somehow not like resonating, it's right? It's not like awkward. Back. Yeah. That awkward yeah. Sleep stage, that stage where you're like, uh, do I keep going or do I trash this? <laughs> yes. And so you have this amazing ability to go right there and see where it wants to go. And even sometimes offer like a couple of options, like, oh, you could do this or you could do that. Like, Great. and yeah, and it's so, it's so small. Like the thing that you say, it's not like you are going on this tirade of explanation. Like it's none of that. This is what I mean about like super friendly and like hanging out on the couch. Like it's really just a couple of phrases or a couple of words. And it just like blows open the, the path that I couldn't see. Um, that's what it's like to have classes with you. And that's why I think it's super, um, let's see, what do I want to say? The way that you have your classes be free form makes that possible, right? If we were, if we were like all making the same thing or all working on the same thing, we would be working on like technique or skill or whatever, right? Whatever the thing is that you learn that way. Um, but you're not like you, it's not, you're not in it. Like it's not what's going on with you and how art deals with you. It's like about the technique or about the artwork or about the drawing or whatever, right? Whatever. It's very uh, surface. It's very surface. This, the, yeah. the free form, I hope what, what is happening. And um, another reason why I'm doing the interviews is to understand that becoming an artist or finding the inner artist is really about learning how to communicate between you and the piece that you want to produce. Between those fluttering ideas, how do you grasp them and make them reality? And when you do step-by-step -step stuff, which there's plenty of that out there, when you do this stuff that's like, let's practice this, everyone do this, everyone do that, it really suffocates people and they don't get a chance to find their own style or their own way. And I've seen you grow in that way with your style and being able to learn how to communicate with yourself. Um, like you said, there's times where I give you a prompt and just from that, you just, it all comes out. It's like this tree just blooms out of nowhere. So, so I think that you bringing that up is a great point. Yeah, it feels that way. It feels very much that way. Like, like it's sort of going and it's eking along and it's like this thing and like, right? Like somehow, somehow it's getting the momentum that it needs. And then like, I'll have a session with you or we'll like, you know, touch on it. And it's just like, 
Like all I can do is sit back and allow it to come through because there's so much that just wants to come through. And, and it, it, it's all coming in like this, like on the path, right? It's not just like spraying out all over the place where you're not sure exactly where to go. Like it's, you know, here's a path, like come, come to this, right? And then, and then go from there. So you feel like there's guidance. Like it's like, even though it's free form, you don't feel like you're just like, what am I doing? Like there's Never. guidance there, which is good. I don't want you to feel like you're like, okay, there's eight different paths. Which one do you want? Like, right. <laughs> so it's not that at all. No, we can guide you, you know, in the direction that you want to go. And um, so, so with all that, is this something that you would recommend and who, or what type of person do you think would benefit from this? Okay. Yes, absolutely. I would recommend it. I recommend it all the time. I'm always talking about you on, on social media because that's how I found you. Right? I found yeah, you as a recommendation I mean, from a friend. We've never even met in person, Cattail. We've never <laughs> even met in person. Our friendship literally bloomed from these classes and, and doing art together. Yeah, in fact, we met in a different class. Like we both happened to be in this other class and you were saying something and maybe I, I was like, this lady is my new best friend. <laughs> Like there's so much that she's saying that I totally feel like in, you know, in my body, I feel it. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, I absolutely would recommend it. Who is it for? That's a good one that I've sort of been thinking about a little bit, but uh, I don't really know because uh, I mean, everybody, but that doesn't really help. And that's not really true either, right? It's not really for <laughs> everybody um now, is it would you think that the people would that would benefit are ones that are open-minded ones that are looking for self-exploration it's a difficult thing and i've been asking myself that question because i don't think that the classes are for someone who wants to sit down and go step by step i don't think it's for people mm -hmm. who are scared to explore um because a lot of what we do in our classes are or sessions. I try not to call them classes because I want to think of them as sessions for someone to come in and be available to do things, not to come in and be told how to do things. Um, so, and, but I do know people that are worried about getting lost and feeling like I'm not an artist, so I can't do this class or session because I don't know what to do. And that's that's where I find the people that are too unsure. And I'm like, how can I find a way to explain that this could benefit someone who feels like they're not an artist? Okay, somebody who is feeling insecure about what to do and maybe are concerned, like that's, that's, that's a non-concern. This is for, like, you have to be a creative person, right? On some level, you have to have like some connection or attachment to creativity or making or doing stuff with your hands. When you are that kind of person, it doesn't take much to give you inspiration, but it can take a lot to get you to like cross the finish line and not just have 20 works in project progress that you've started. Um, I had, I, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I knew this lady one time um, who used to talk about how she was a, mon a monogamous knitter. Like she'll only work on one thing at a time. And like, I can't, I can't. Oh, I, mean, <laughs> I have to have, like, I have to be able to jump between things because I like one just starts to feel like a rut and then it doesn't, it doesn't feel healing or inspiring or, you know, like it's communicating. It feels like work and create like creative things when they start to feel like work, they just, it, that stops working for me. So I need to be able to jump around between, between things. So if you are that kind of person, then not having a structured session is, um, it, it's, a, it's a moot point, it doesn't matter. Like it, it really has nothing to do, you know, the fact that it is free form allows all that to happen. And so we've been in session, I've had sessions with you where like, I really, like all I can do is be here. <laughs> like I don't have more brain width besides just being here and I'll just jot down a few notes and that's enough to like later when I'm able to sit with my notes and, and feel like I want to make something, I'm able to take those notes and turn it into like some big, beautiful thing. I love that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I think that anybody who's going to take your classes, anybody who's in your community, like anybody who is drawn to you is, um, 
should never worry about not knowing what to do in the class because that is that's the easiest part yeah okay well that's great and you, you mentioned community so um since you are a subscriber for your kids and um a session taker yourself you are in the session stars facebook group how do you like that do you like having that that group of people the support um does that do anything for you Yes, I love it <laughs> because um, because I'm able to like show stuff, right? Like I make stuff so so much more frequently than however many times I take a session, right? Or however many times I connect with you, and I get to show it to you. I get to show it to the other people in the community. I get to see what they're doing, and we all do different stuff. Mm -hmm. Like none of it, which is another really cool thing about it being freeform is that it doesn't matter what your medium is. There's something for everyone who you know who wants a better connection, a better communication with your creative parts. Um, that's who it's for, right? Uh, yeah. So we, we, the people in the community are all people like that. Like we all have our, our medium, we all have our skills. We all have the thing that, you know, where we feel comfortable expressing ourselves. And to see, to see that come from other people is mind blowing when, when, you know, other people get to post stuff that they've been working on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. Or like, why would you even think to combine those things? Or how did you even get there? Um, and it's really inspiring and it's really like supportive and everybody's really kind and supportive of each other. Um, you know, we're all, we're all in it, right? We're all yeah, in the yeah. same mess of like creating things and like having that fear of like, this thing is who I am, but it's not because it's the thing I made. And well, and you get to kind of, you get to see their process because because since we do it as a group on online, because that's what we're doing right now for now, is is you guys get to know each other too, because it's not always art. Sometimes we make jokes, we talk about real feelings, we talk about deep stuff. That's another part of it being free form. That's the part that I have to say, I'm not an art therapist, but it feels like therapy because we can open up to each other. There's no judgment there. And, and you can see someone who's struggling with an art piece, you can help them. Linda can say, oh, what if it was this? What if it was that? Like, so the, the part that I find really beautiful is to see that you guys reach out and start helping each other. And to see that with that community page, um, you guys get to see the ending. You might've been there for the very beginning of this, like all it was was a prompt on a piece of paper. And then like, a week or two later, they post this thing that they've done and five other things that are something similar. And, and I think it's really cool to watch you guys interact. I love seeing how supportive you are when one client says one thing and the other one says another. And then sometimes you guys team up, which is super cool. I know that you've, you've talked to, talked to um, another client about teaming up and that's beautiful. That's awesome. Cause it is hard to find yes. people that you can work with like that we've been messaging and like sending pictures back and forth and like brainstorming and I, I get so excited. That's another um, thing, you're gonna be in the class, you have to be ready for ease. <laughs> yes, we are very excitable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I wanna go back and talk a little bit about this, the therapy piece, right? Like I'm an energy healer. I work, I carry a lot of energy I have uh, open emotional centers. I'm highly sensitive. Like everything is really, uh, like I feel it all, right? It's really easy for me to like, you know, be really empathetic. I'm like hyper empathetic to the point where it, it's detriment to myself. But uh, when I'm in the art classes, that is not my role. That is not my job. And I can like sit back and know that I have those things and can like be in community knowing that those, you know, knowing that that's who I am, but I don't have to carry it. And I, and it's a time where I get to like, just be me. Right. And I don't have to worry about what my kids are doing. I don't have to worry about what my husband's doing. I don't have to worry about what my clients are up to or what my friends need. Like, it's really not about, uh, like just that by itself is super healing when otherwise, you know, a lot of people are leaning on you. Right. Or a lot of people like, you know, I, like I have a lot, um, this is a support for me, not a, not a time when I'm supporting. It's self-care. It's that moment okay. of taking that breath. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. 
So I do have some questions over here. So if I look over, that's what it is. I'm kind of like oh, cheating on my own video. <laughs> so now we're going to go through something that I'm really excited about because I don't know what you picked. Um, I think I know, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to have Linda share a piece of work that she's the most proud of or a moment that she had a breakthrough and um, why she chose the piece, why she got a moment from it and what she learned. So that's a lot, but Linda's really good at just taking it and going with it. So I will let you show your piece. All right. This is the piece that I brought today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Is that what you thought I was going to talk about? I wasn't sure. I was thinking it might have been the other one, but this is great. I actually, I'm so excited that you picked this one. <laughs> Why? Why are you excited that I picked this one? Because this was, this was where it all started. This was the beginning of your journey. This was you in pajamas on the carpet, on the floor with, with crayons and random markers and a piece of paper, and you were stressed. You were yeah. to a breaking point of not knowing what you were anymore as a creative. And I could feel it coming off of you like just like nobody's business. Like I knew. And then I gave you the prompt of you told me a little bit about yourself. You were like, oh, I, I work with layers. And, and, and um, why don't you go ahead and say what, what your doctorate is in? Uh, my doctorate is in um, earth and planetary sciences. So I studied the earth's magnetic fields. And specifically, I studied the Earth's magnetic field as recorded from sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks are typically very layered. They're really structured. Um, they have like their own set of rules for like how to interpret them and, and do all this stuff. So um, I'm, a, I'm a sedimentary rock. <laughs> I'm a soft rock geologist. And I studied the Earth's magnetic field, um, which is all about like, um, in terms of like studying the Earth's magnetic field, it's all about like how the rocks record information from the Earth's magnetic field? How do you recon how do you pull that information out of the rocks? And how do you then take that data and build a story around um, the history of the field of the earth and how it flips and all, and all this kind of stuff. And then how you can use that information to actually talk about the order of events that happened or how you know different rocks are related to each other or what the surface of the earth looked like when the dinosaurs were roaming because it looked very different than it does now. Um, and all of that stuff comes from our understanding of the Earth's magnetic field. So I was, um, when I came, when I started taking sessions with you, uh, and, and even still, but not, but not as much, uh, I really struggle because I have all this like really classical academic training. Um, I very much wanted to be a professor. I tried really, really hard to become a professor, but I just didn't. There's just more jobs than there are people. And that's not where I ended up or where I meant to be or whatever. So, um, so there's that, there's that piece. And then there's the piece of, you know, the way that I was able to get through graduate school and the way that I was able to get, you know, past all the hurdles. I gotta take a breath. <laughs> um, so much stuff. So much stuff. I mean, you know, uh, it's hard. Graduate school is, is a, is a difficult time. Um, and what really helped me through all that time was energy healing. I did a lot of energy healing, did a lot of energy work during that time and therapy and, and other things. Um, but in doing all that energy healing, when it became available, when it became an option for me to do the training, I knew that I had to do it because I, um, I had two daughters at the time and I was pregnant with my third. And I was like, man, if I don't, if I don't do something about this, like I'm going to teach my kids that it's okay for them to feel this way. And it's not. Like I felt so badly about myself and I felt so like I had made all these bad life choices and I had wasted all this time and energy and money and I had wasted like that I had really wasted all this stuff. Um, so I was really struggling with how do I fit this energy healing training and this practitioner as an energy healer with this very academic scientific um, background that I had. And then on top of all that, like knitting and crocheting is how I relaxed and how I got through stuff. Um, so I was, I was struggling with my mode of relaxation. I was, you know, I was feeling really blocked with, um, with my that, creative stuff. That can be dangerous when you're like so full. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm full. I'm always very full. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a generator in human design, which are like full up people. Like they're always like doing, doing stuff. And I used to think that I like thrived on the stress. So I would like purposefully put myself in stressful situations because I thought that that's what I really needed to like kick myself in the pants and get going. Um, what I've since learned is that it's not the stress, it's the like the tension, 
right? It's the, it's that like being pulled in all these different ways, like helps me sort of relax and, and flow between them because uh, I'm not spending too much time, you know, stuck in any one thing. So, <laughs> so I came to see you and I started drawing and literally I started drawing lines, like just horizontal lines. That's all I had. And I just had like a couple of different colors and I just, it was just like coloring, like let's just relax and do some coloring. And in the middle of that, Hala was like, do you do any cross stitching? And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> yes, I very much know how to cross stitch, but I haven't cross stitched in like 20 years. And how do you know that that's something that I do? And like, like it's such a simple thing. Like, oh, you know, do you, do you cross stitch? Like it was such a, Great. such a small, like friendly conversation, like friend on the couch, living room situation, like not like there was nothing threatening. There was nothing, anything about it, but it, like it blew my mind that she even could know that much about me because we had never come up. Uh, you know, I hadn't done you. That was like the first time I've ever seen you, I think. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, and so uh, I went and I found myself all my supplies because I had them for cross stitching because it's part of, you know, part of my growing up. It's just something I know how to do, even though I, it's not something that I do on the regular. Um, so I found my piece of fabric, which had this little, this little blip on it already. Like I had started something and abandoned it many years later. Um, so I left it on, I left it there on purpose to remind me, um, that you don't always like it, you can go and come back. It doesn't have to all happen right now. Mm -hmm. And then as I was working on these layers, so many things about these layers, like the crosses are all different sizes and the textures are a little different and they don't line up on purpose. They're like a little wonky, so which was like not doing so powerful for me. <laughs> I was like, take that and take that and I'm not gonna make a match. And I'm not <laughs> it was your and moment to just be like, I'm gonna do it my way and I don't care. <laughs> yes, but that like, I hadn't even considered those things you know I was like oh it's got to happen this way and it's got to be this way and I was really concerned about the back of the piece right oh, we talked about yes. this as well yeah um you know Hala was like do it and then hang it backwards I was like what <laughs> why would I do that my mom would kill me <laughs> <laughs> exactly um but I did and I held and I put it up backwards for a little bit and it really like allowed me to relax into it and to like, just see it for like this thing. Like it's really just thread and fabric. That's it. Like, it's not scary and it's not, <laughs> it's not gonna judge me and it's not- It was not... the beauty of doing it. It was the beauty of finally getting past the BS and, and knowing that it's okay. You don't have to be like this person or that person. I think it helps you stop comparing yourself to others. And it also, in the end, with, with some of your other pieces, I've seen you do stuff that I don't know if you've ever done before. Things that, that are very explorative, like lots of experimenting. And that's where you find your style. And I, I just, I adore how hardworking you are. <laughs> we had, um, I had a couple of years ago taken a class where we were making mandalas. That was like one of the things that we were doing in the class. And so I, this is one of the pieces that I drew back then. And so when I started embroidering this piece, when I started getting through the layers, I was like, this needs, <laughs> this needs something round and something with petals and flowers because it can't just be lines and it can't just be, you know, and I don't even know which way it goes. I hang it, I either hang it this way or I hang it this way. And every, every like, I don't know, a couple months, I'll just flip it. <laughs> I don't, it's been a while since I made this. Um, yeah. It, yeah, that was. When was that? That was like, that was, that was like the beginning of COVID, right? I think so. It was, it was very close to, to those early days. Um, it was actually like, I want to say like February or March. Yep. Maybe April, because I had like, I had been working on these knitting patterns and I wanted to make this book of like Irish knitting patterns and I wanted it to be ready by St. Patrick's Day. And I remember at some point, like at some point I realized that it wasn't going to be and that I was actually really far away from this goal that I wanted. And it just totally shut me down. And I was like, I don't know who I am. What good am I, right? Like what, all the things, right? Like you miss your deadline and it's like all the things and it all is just piling up. And that's where I was when, when I met you, I was like, I don't know what to do. I can't move forward with this thing 
because I, uh, I'm not very, like, I'm not really regimented. I really like if the energy is aligned and if, and if the path is clear, then I'm really good about being diligent and getting the work done. That's how I got my degrees. Mm -hmm. But with art, um, you know, you don't have the structure that goes along with it. Um, and you don't have like, I don't know, the feedback, the help. Of, it's, you kind of need someone in your corner to be like, you got this, keep going. And if you, if you get stuck and you're like, well, what about this part? That's where you just kind of go, okay, so what if we did this? Or what if we did that? Or why does it bother you that much? I think sometimes that's the question that we don't ask ourselves is why? Like, we'll be like, oh, well, because it's in the wrong spot or it's the wrong color. And it's like, okay, well, if we look at it, what color does it need to be? Like, I, we, we shy away from the reason why our project is stuck. And a lot of times it's because it's like within us, like we're not staying true to like those urges or those random things that are like, do it green. And you're like, but it's supposed to be purple. Do it green. <laughs> that is a really good point because there's been a number of times when you've been like, why don't you blah, blah, blah. And I'd be like, no, I can't do it that way. And then like, I let it sink in and I'm like, hmm, what if? <laughs> You know, or, or like, yeah, because sometimes it's so simple. Like, you know, why don't you try cross stitching some layers? Like, I was like, what? No, that's so annoying and blah, blah, blah. Like, I can't. And then I did and I loved it and it was amazing. And not only that, like, it has like liberated my embroidery. Like, I've been embroidering like crazy, which actually, like, I have this callus on my finger and I've been meaning to do a whole social media post about this because it's like, is it a protection or is it like being a martyr? Like what, right. Like, right? It's a little bit of both, but you know, obviously like my skin is protecting itself by getting thicker and harder so that, because I'm working the needle so much. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's like, well, if I'm working the needle so much that it's hurting my finger, like why am I working the needle so much? <laughs> People who play guitar get those. And, Absolutely. And you know, to me, that sounds like you're, you've got some new armor. You've, you've got yes. like a new badge of honor, like- armor. It's, yes, it's totally like, hey, you went through the war and you you came out with maybe a little bit of a, of a you know wound, but now that wound is healed and it's turned into like the greatest story ever, right there. <laughs> like on my touch screen, it just it sounds hard. Like you hear it. Like, this finger doesn't sound like anything, but this finger like clicks, <laughs> and I'm like, where is that gonna work? But it does. Don't it's kill me for that. No. <laughs> no, but like, oh, I just, I have so many ideas. I have so many ideas. Like that, that's always been the case, right? I, I like, I'm very creative. I that's never a problem for me figuring out what to do, what to do. It's what to do next where I get stuck. The right? What's the next step? Or you know, don't get so overwhelmed. Like I'm, I'm so happy to get overwhelmed in like 10 steps down the road. And then I'm like, well, well I can't because <laughs> I didn't do any of it. I had all these ideas and then I just walked away. And <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and and that's, so that's me too. Like, you know, being someone who's bipolar, being someone who has ADHD type things going on, like, I know what it's like to be sitting at a desk and be like, I have eight ideas, which one do I start? Or I'll start them all and then half of them are done, which is why I do finish it Friday. <laughs> but it's like, I know that. I know that feeling because I, I am somewhat self-taught. Like I've been to school for stuff. I've learned techniques and things, but being self-taught literally taught me how to lean into free form like all the way. Just be like, I guess I'm going to jump and hope I can fly. And if I can't fly, then I'll have to learn how to roll. And if I can't roll, then I'll dig. Like, that's how I learned how to do my art. And I am super happy that what I have learned over the 14 years that I've been doing it is something that I can teach other people. And that hopefully helps them heal and learn and be able to communicate and grow and Oh my gosh, I never thought of myself as someone who's organized, but if my messy brain organizes things in a certain way and it helps other people organize things, then great. Cause I was always like, man, I am a mess. <laughs> yeah, you're like a creative organizer. <laughs> right? I'm like a beautiful mess and it works out just right. 
I remember being at a, at a science conference one time and they had quizzed us all, like they'd give, given us all this quiz and they took all the results and they put it up. And so they're like, you know, most people fall like on the bell curve, right? And then there's like this little tail out here and there's like two of us. And they're like, you guys, I was one of them, you guys survived science. Like you have survived and gotten here because you're create, like your, your brain is not step-by-step -step logical. Um, and so you guys have found a way to make it through when the system is not designed for you. The system is not designed to support you. It's not designed to help you through. So I feel really passionate about being in that space now. Like, and the reason I keep coming back to you, the reason that I keep wanting to dig deeper with you and do sessions with you is because I feel that I'm in this really unique position of having this technical science background and having this very like, like almost esoteric, fluffy energy healing piece. And I feel like the art is, is the way in which I'm gonna get that stuff to combine, right? I've always been a separator. I've always been like this and that, um, never and. It's always this and that. And because it's this and that, I'm never all the way here and I'm never all the way here. I have to like put this, if I'm here, I have to put this part away. And if I'm here, I have to put this part away. Um, and so that's something that we've worked on a lot and will continue to work on with me is like, how do I bring it together? Because I catch myself all the time. I'm like, okay, here's an idea, but if I want to do it, then really I have to split it up. And I'm like, nope, nope. I got to like bring it back in. I got to stop splitting and bring them together and bring them together as much as I can and then see what happens. Right. And it's all about it, that like intertwined balance. And I mean, that's what we've worked on with the one-on-one -on -one, is you figuring out who are these three pieces of you and how we can put them together, but still let them be independent and stand on their own. And I think women and mothers in general um, have, have that trouble sometimes when, you know, cause when you are, or, or even if you're um, a dad, you know, whatever it is, grandparents, I was raised by my grandparents, anyone having to take care of so many different people, you have to kind of shut this part off, do this. Now I'm cleaning the house. Now I'm taking care of the kids. Now we're doing homework time. Like everything has this like slotted area. And I think that when we start to pull ourselves apart, there's gotta be something that helps put the net and pull it all back together. And I think that learning how to do things free form in maybe a creative way, if you are creative, can actually teach you how to do that in life in general. To, to use that ability of um, here's something that I have. I don't really like it. I'm not sure if I'm inspired by it. I don't know what to do with it. Because we've all had those moments where something in our life is like, well, here it is. I have it. I have to do something with it. I don't know what. There's a deadline. Like, what do I do? And so being able to think outside of the box and learn how to calm yourself down and learn how to um, brainstorm and learn to think of things that you normally wouldn't, sometimes can help you bring those other parts of life back together. So that's why I think that art can be a creative healing tool when you're allowed to explore and expand and think within, not just being like, I am a person, this is stuff. <laughs> yeah, and just like in therapy, when you, you know, when you go to therapy and you've got this, this pattern that you can't get past or this thing that's really bothering you, you know, that person, is just there to like reflect back to you what you've said, you know, to put it maybe in a different perspective, like to show you a different way. And sometimes that like, that's enough to like allow you to see things differently. I've been to therapy a lot for my life, a lot of different times in my life for a lot of different reasons. Um, but I don't, be, maybe it's because it's like in a talking environment, it's not in like a making environment. I feel like these sessions, like the, the tangible things that I have to look at are like a constant reminder of how I'm changing and growing, how I'm able to like speak in different ways. Like I made this, you know, this big, huge roots of our labor thing, a big embroidery piece because of the work that we did on like a carrot, right? Do a carrot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it wasn't even that. Like, carrot, do a video on how to do a carrot. Everybody wants to know how to do what you do. And then it went from like one little session to like 10, I think, or 11. 10, yeah, 10 or 11. I, I saw, like, I, I wanted to, to like, every time I switched a stitch and I wanted to like, just try a bunch of different stitches. Every time I switched a stitch, I wanted to like talk through it. 
But then it got to the point where like I was switching like two or three stitches in a day and I was like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> like I was tied to the, to the live. So then I, I really disconnected at the end and just allowed myself to like work on the piece instead of it being like a teaching thing. But yeah, I usually did 10, 10 or 11 uh, little live videos <laughs> that was great. on that. And that, that was fun. Like in the beginning, I was like having to in, like get the needle, the, get the thread through the needle on the live. And I was like, never again. So like the next time I came on with like two needles that were already threaded, one in this color, one in that color. So I could just like pick up and go. <laughs> yeah, and, and even that alone, if you choose at some point to do videos and things in, in your art, new art way, your new path, now you have that experience too. So, so it's fun to, to poke people. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to be like, Hey, Hey, Go over there. I know it's uncomfortable, but just go over there for a minute. We'll see what happens. And then people end up being like, I kind of like it over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like it over here. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. So would you say that you can now honestly call yourself a creative or an artist? Yes. Something that you have found with this. Yes. Yes. Um, I used to have a real hard time with the word also because I thought of an artist as like a painter, right? Or like a sculptor. And I had never sculpted. We did this, you know, this clay session and it was so fun. It was so fun. And now we're like borderline addicted to clay. Like <laughs> we go through like the boxes and not just me, but my kids too. And they get excited and they make stuff. And, um, you know, for them, just, just to plug them for, for just a second, um, you know, my, my kids are also super creative. They have a ton of ideas, and they um, they don't want they don't want to sit and draw the same butterfly that everyone is doing in the class. Like they'll do it, and it you know it's it's a thing. And like when it's done, like so unhappy in the class like that. I just see it. I know them so well. They'd be like, "This is so annoying." <laughs> and like boring and annoying and like yeah it's fine and like when it's done it's just like this thing that they did at school that they come home with whereas like the stuff that they make here is just like completely inspired and like you know like my oldest she doesn't even want you like yeah. <laughs> she wants the space that you provide and when she's done she wants your feedback but like along the way if she gets stuck like she doesn't want help she wants to find her own way out um Whereas like my middle, my middle child was like, all right, what do you got for me? Yeah. Okay. What do you got for me now? Next. All right. What do I do next? <laughs> more, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And they're really different, but they both get a lot out of their sessions with you. And they both like really look forward to hollow art class. That's what we call it. Hollow. <laughs> Maybe we should start calling them hollow art sessions. Yep. <laughs> well, and the cool thing is, is that we're able to, I am able to kind of work with them together yet separately like even though one is like I'm on my own and this one's like I really want you here it still works somehow and, it, and it's like a beautiful balance I, I love I mean it's that way in the adult sessions too you know we're all in a, in a group like we're all in there together and it really it doesn't take a lot like you're so powerful like you're so potent it, it's just like a little bit that you need to really like oh like really you know shift the gears in a in a whole new way that you know i don't think i would have got to because for the past 40 some years i've never been in this place you know oh. never been in this, in this like feeling so artistic it makes me so happy i can't even <laughs> like I <have> to <laughs> hug my lemon <laughs> which she also made and it's gorgeous that lemon. so my daughters and I were uh going to swimming and there was a girl in line ahead of us and she had a lemon wedge bag and it was like clear plastic that she could take to the pool with her and I was like Kaylee look at that and she was like that looks cool and I was like no I mean look at it and I was like like from then I was obsessed and I was like got to do the lemon thing and like I didn't know what to do about it like I didn't know it was going to be quilted I didn't know it was going to be made out of cotton I didn't know it was going to be layered. Um, I had never quilted before. Quilting was something that I started doing um, not in your art classes because we didn't do quilting stuff. We did like, we did the dolls, right? We, we did some sewing and we did the dolls. And then um, I found out about this, uh, this display science thing that's happening. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make these quilts for this thing, even though I've never done quilting before. Um, and it was super fun, really fun. And like, uh, where I am now is I'm, I'm quilting 
like I'm doing some machine stuff, but then I'm spending time with that machined piece um, doing hand stuff. Um, or like with the with the carrot thing that blew up into this big huge thing, I took that and then I quilted it onto a piece of fabric. And that, I mean, that's mind blowing. And I have it like hung in above the kitchen table. Like I spent a lot of time looking at it. And I and it's like, I never in my life seriously considered that I could decorate my own walls with my artwork. Aww, that's I mean, I see you do it and I and they talk about it on television, like when they do makeover shows and they have people, they're like, okay, you paint this and you make these curtains and blah, blah, blah. And I'm always like, oh, that would be fun. I could totally do that. But I'm never like, I need to do that. I can do that. I'm always like, oh, that would be neat. I could do that, but, but I'm not going to. <laughs> So now I'm like seriously considered like I'm, I'm putting thought and time into like, where does a piece of art need to be? Because I can see what it needs to look like, what I want to look at in that space and then reverse engineer it and try to figure out how to get it, how to get it to that's happen. That's you using both. That's you using both. And I, that's, that's so funny how we end up with a goal when we don't even need to. And, and so, and, and to, to end everything, I really just want to say that that Linda is an artist. Linda has always been an artist and that she is so unique and so one of a kind like all of the clients that join me and I I look at her and I am just it's kind of like when your kid goes like graduates you're like oh cuz it's it's so beautiful to see how much because you feel like it's potent and it happens you know like from my perspective you've just been like boom like grow and do and be and it's so inspirational like all of you guys inspire me in so many different ways and it's awesome that it's trickling down into your children and it's great that you you went for the one-on-one -on -one and it's I just I have seen you grow in so many different ways. I've seen you make art that you were like, I didn't know I could do that, you know, and, and stuff that came from you that was like a medium you never thought of before. And it was instantly like natural to you. And this is where I believe freeform worked best for you because you were allowed to do those things. And I was able to watch you learn about you, see how you use your creative brain, watch how you use techniques. I know that you're tactile. I know that you like using your hands, you know, as to where some of my other people want to do digital art. So I really got a chance to just observe you and give you little bits here and there and then watch you turn into the artist that you are. And now, like on my normal sessions, my house is being a house. <laughs> So thank you for this interview. I really appreciate it. And I just want to let you know that you're super awesome. And um, I'll see you in class soon. Yes. <laughs> All right, Holla, thank you. Bye.